This conference will now be recorded. The time being 6.32 p.m., I'd like to call the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, January 26th meeting of the Tilton Planning Board to order. <clears throat> Before we get started, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere with the meeting. As chair of this meeting, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis, and in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 20-20-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically. And these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. <clears throat> Please note that there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting, which is authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to concern, <coughs> confirm that we're providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically may call the conference call number, <coughs> which is found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedules and agendas for this meeting. <coughs> Additional public access by video or other electronic means will be available as follows. <coughs> We're using the GoToMeeting platform for the electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during the meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer at the address found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedules and agendas. We're providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing this meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access this meeting via telephone conference and by go to meeting, and instructions are provided on the Tilton Town website, again at tiltonnh.org, and at the town kiosk. We're providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public listening and have questions, please write down your questions. And at the end of each agenda item, I'll ask if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next agenda item. Please state your name and your address and then ask your question. We're providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. We will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjourn the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes that are taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance with each member states their presence and also please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during the meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Given the unusual circumstances, we will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm Jane Alden and there's one other person in the room. Eric Pyra. Two other people now, but I am alone. And Leanne, there's an email from Todd O'Dell. He is unable to attend. Yeah, thank you. I saw that. Thank you. Frederick Senna. Oh. Judy Tilton. Frederick Senna. Heading to my car. Sorry. <laughs> Jane, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay, it's showing up as Ginny Forrester under my microphone, so I, and it shows her is her microphone off. Okay, we're <laughs> going to continue 
the public hearing. So I'm going to open the public hearing now. And uh, does everybody have a copy of the ordinances? Did everybody on the planning board get a copy? Of, and it had, okay. So does anybody have any questions right now on any from the, from the uh, planning board? Or any comments on them? Okay. All right. If not, then I'm going to go to the uh, agenda. And number one is a site plan review for Sale View Inc. at 1015 Laconia Road, map U01-7. And I believe that they're not ready at the current time to be here. So I will entertain a motion to continue this to 223-21. To continue case planning board case 20-05 to our next meeting which will be two uh okay uh, well i think if we continue it to 223-21 is that when we should continue it i believe that's the correct time it'll take yeah. that long yeah yes yes okay so eric would you like to put that date in in your motion For 223? Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion that we continue planning board case 20. I'm oh, sorry, planning board number 20 05 to our the meeting of February 23rd, 2021. Frederick, okay. a second. Okay, all in favor? Alden, yes. Fire, yes. And I, yes. Tilton, yes. Christine? Dembitsky, yes. Fred? Yes. Fred, yes. Oh, Fred said yes. Okay. All right. So that is continued to 223-21. The next is a site plan review for uh, fireworks of Tilton. And I believe, Leanne, again, you said that they are unable to uh, have all the information that we need. Is that correct? Yeah, so fireworks of Tilton, when they came to you, they were sent back to um, the zoning board mm -hmm. and they were supposed to be uh, on the January agenda and they did not appear. They weren't ready. So they're continued. They're coming in uh, in um, what are we in in February. So they will need to be um, continued as well to the 23rd, but also since they were found complete at your um, meeting, I believe of uh, November, then your 65 days will be up by the time that 23rd comes up. So that needs an extension and the applicant has agreed to an extension. So I would recommend in addition to continuing that you make a motion to extend um, this for 90 days. Okay, I'll make a motion to extend fireworks of Tilton which is um, until February uh, 23rd. It's an extension for 90 days. Um, Jane, I think it's two separate, if, if I may, just um, just for procedure, if we can do the extension for 90 days on the public hearing, because you have a 60 day decision requirement. So you're gonna extend that 90 days and then you can do a motion to continue this to the 23rd, like you did the, um, went in two separate. I think it'll be just clearer if, if you don't okay, mind. So, so okay. I, make, I make a motion to extend this one to 223. Okay. So continue, right? Can you just, mm -hmm. That's fine. All right. Frederick, send out a second. All in favor? Alden, yes. Hi, Hilton? Yes. Senna? Yes. Dembinski? Dembitsky, yes. Okay. And the third site plan review. Jane? Yes. So you still need a motion to extend it for 90 days. You just continued it to the 23rd, I believe. Okay. In the yes. All right. I, I, I thought I had said extend it for 90 days, but it will continue it. Would somebody like to make a motion to extend it for 90 days? Make a motion to extend planning board case 20-06 beyond the 65-day calendar to to uh, allow for 90 days. I'll second that. All in favor? All deny. Pyre, yes. 
Then I guess. Tilton, yes. Kandinsky? Deputy, yes. Okay, so that that it's been granted an extension and a continuance until 223-21. All right, the third case we have is site plan for MV tractor and equipment. Did everybody get the uh, comments from the engineer that I think was sent out late this afternoon? So you should have comments from the town's engineer, uh, Mr. Keach, that were dated the 12th of January. And I didn't get the response from Nobis until this afternoon with the new plan. So I just sent that out probably between 3.30 and 4 today. So the response to Mr. Keach's review and a an, uh, revised site plan should have been in your email sometime late this afternoon. Just make sure you did, everybody, did everybody get that? I received it, but I have not had a chance to review it. Ditto. Did the uh, Judy? Did you get the copy? I did get it, but I have yet to review it. Okay. Christine, did you get the copy? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you have a chance to review it? Uh, no. Okay. And Fred, did you have a chance to review it? I did. You did. So I guess most of us did not have a chance. And uh, I want to know how the board feels about it. Do you want to, to go on and look at the site plan? Or do you want to, we've had a chance to review the engineer's notes and so continue it? How does the board feel? Fred? Um, I'm okay either way. I mean, if we take five minutes, just go over it real fast. And if that interested it, we can do that too. Okay. Christine, how do you feel? Well, I'm in a vehicle, so I can't uh, exactly review it. Okay. And Judy, how do you feel? I'll go along with what everyone's comfortable with. Okay. And Eric? I, I have not reviewed it at all. The stuff, the information that um, came in, I reviewed the other stuff earlier this morning or earlier this afternoon. But this, I, that, this that came in at 4 o'clock, I have not reviewed. And I have not had an opportunity to review it. And Christine's in her car, and she can't. So um, that's three of us that haven't had a chance. Uh, we could take five minutes and review it, but I think it might take more than five minutes. Um, if someone would like to make a motion to continue it, we can do that until the 23rd? Well, Madam Chairman, question of procedure. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this the first time that this case has been before us? No, we had the case before us one other time, but we did not have the information. We did do a lot merger, Eric, I believe. And that's so, all that we... Yep, yeah, we, we had it. Um... We had it for completion. It was found complete, and the board um, approved a lot merger, but we're still waiting for the site plan review um, and the um, conditional use permit review. So those are those are scheduled for tonight, but we are getting some of the information a little late. Um, I would suggest you possibly can allow maybe the engineer, if he wants to give an overview, at least you might uh, – uh, give a little more information to the board and maybe make no decision tonight until you have time to mull it over. But um, that's up to that's up to you as a board. So, well, since the engineer is is available, shall we listen to the engineer? I'm in agreement with that. How about Judy? Yes. Fred? Yes. That's fine with me too. Okay, and that was Christine and Eric. You want to listen to the review, please? Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna print out the five-page okay. report. So, okay, I'll, I'll mute. Okay. So, Chris. Hi, everyone. Uh, Chris Netto from Nobis Group. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Uh, Wonder if I could share my screen. Okay. Just gave it to you, Chris. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, let's see, which screen is it going to let me share here? Sorry, bear with me. All right, hopefully everyone can see that. This is uh, just a colored up copy of the site plan. So again, we're here for MB Tractor, um, located at 12 and 18 Bitter and Lane. And last time we were before the board on the 12th, we, uh, the board voted to consolidate these two lots into one. And so on the left-hand side of the screen is a Route 3 that runs north-south. Uh, the site is roughly 15 acres, consists of uh, the existing retail building that's about 13,000 square feet uh, and a cold storage building that you approved, uh, I believe is 2017 out back around 12,000 square feet. So what we're proposing to do is, again, merge the two lots. We're proposing a 12,600 square foot addition to the building, uh, to the back of the existing retail building. That'll be used for, uh, for parts storage and for equipment maintenance. Um, we're also uh, basically paving an area between the two lots that's currently a small narrow wetland uh, that of about 3,200 square feet. And we got an approval, we got a permit from the wetlands board earlier in the year, I'm sorry, late last year uh, to fill those wetlands. So again, about 3,200 square feet. So that back area behind the building where the, where the wetlands being filled will be used for additional equipment storage and uh, operational areas so people can swing around the building and get in the overhead doors. Um, my understanding is the uh, the Board of Selectmen is voting on whether to include a warrant article at town meeting as, as to uh, getting or giving up Bitter and Lane so this will become a private road, no longer will be public. Uh, and you can see here, this is the dark gray area. Um, we are proposing some landscaping out along Bitter and Lane with some equipment storage along the road as well. And then finally, way out back, um, we're proposing an additional 20,000 square feet of paved area. And all the stormwater runoff will, is, is being directed into the existing ponds that are out there. And uh, they do have additional storage volume to accommodate that. We met with the Conservation Commission last Monday night uh, to address some comments that they had. Uh, they were satisfied with our responses and hopefully uh, uh, have forwarded a positive recommendation to the board for that. And uh, additionally, as, as, as uh, everyone has discussed tonight, we, we received some comments from the town's engineer back on January 12th, and we were just able to respond to those comments and get something back to you tonight. So we understand it's short notice. Uh, we're, we have no problem with uh, coming back to you in a couple of weeks once you've had a chance to take a look at the engineer's comments. Hopefully, by the time we come back, the engineer will, will have signed off on the plans as well, which would make things easier. So uh, one more thing, we did get an alteration of terrain permit late last year for the project as well. Uh, so the only two permits remaining for the project or a, a state sewer permit. We have to relocate the sewer that goes or that will go around the building. Uh, and uh, we also need a modification to our New Hampshire DOT uh, driveway permit. Actually, the, that's the town's permit because the town uh, has jurisdiction on Bitter and Lane right now. So well, we will be submitting a modification for that. And that is it. I'm happy to answer questions from the board. Chris, can you can you address the uh, the issue of the snow storage that you had in the wetland conservation district? Sure, absolutely. So there's a hundred foot setback from Ice House Pond, and I, I think we showed some snow storage in that area that was commented on by both the conservation commission and the town's engineer. We've we've 
gotten rid of that. We've moved any snow storage out of the buffer. We've added a note to the plans that says there will be no snow storage in the wetland buffers per the town's ordinance. There is more than such sufficient uh, paved area on the site to accommodate snow storage. Uh, so, um, and, that, and that's been noted by our engineer too, that that's been taken care of. So. That's under zoning matters, if anybody wants to look at it. Well, it was, it was noted as an issue by our engineer, but it isn't noted as it was taken care of yet. I guess maybe Nobis in their comments, maybe you, I haven't even had a chance to read their comments. Yeah, yeah no, our, our, no. Our, res, our response that we just forwarded late this afternoon addresses that, so. Okay, thanks, Chris. Sure. It says it's been eliminated and that the wetlands buffer are not going to be used and that's been noted on the C1 on the sheet. Any comments or questions from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? All right. I have a question, sorry, I couldn't you didn't unmute yourself. Can I speak? Yes. This is Eric. Yes, you may. Yeah. On the um, uh, um, Chris, on the on the plan that you just had up, there was a wetland that you're filling behind the building, like thirty-two. Was it thirty-two hundred square feet? That's correct. Yeah. That's this area so, that's uh, kind of a dark hatch in here. Yeah. Ab above that um the area that kind of looks like a bad imitation of the old man on the mountain the, <laughs> this area yep yeah, yeah the one that, it looks like and i don't know the symbols or the key on this but that looks like it might be some wetlands that would have naturally drained to the other wetland that's so, correct so how is that gonna drain now yeah so we're we're, we're basically there's a culvert that uh, that went under the driveway yep. to connect the two wetlands. So we're going to pick up that culvert and run it all the way down to uh, beyond Bittern Lane, and it will dump into Ice House Pond. And uh, one of the comments that the state of New Hampshire had was uh, they wanted us to replicate some some treatment uh, of uh, of the water running through there. So we added a sort of a treatment element at the end of the pipe before it actually gets into Ice House Pond. So it will have a chance to dilute or whatever it needs to do that it would have received by going into that wetland, slowing its eventual uh, entry into Ice House Pond. That's right. And we did satisfy the wetlands board on that by, by adding that element to the end of the pipe. And most of this, the drainage that goes into this wetland is actually from is actually groundwater from the Lowe's coal site that drains through pipes in the wall. Yeah. Um, and all of our all of our runoff from our site is it, it actually directed into the ponds, our detention ponds. None of it goes into the the uh, wetlands that are on site. And then in on the back in the back lot and the far back lot, you're adding. 20,000 square feet of paved impervious surface. That's right. All right. And that's gonna drain into that drainage pond right there? Right, and we are ex actually extending that pond by about 25% about in order to accommodate the additional runoff from the paved area. What about for like the 100 year event? It's designed for, it will handle a 100 year event without without blowing out that's required by the state that we show that uh, it's designed for a 25 year event but it will hold a 100 year event okay thank you
Jane's muted. Okay, now I'm not. Uh, would anybody like to make a motion to continue until 2:21? What about our meet? What about the earlier meeting in February? The next February 9th. Are we meeting February 9th? We are meeting February 9th. You can continue. It's up to you. You can continue to February 9th. That's the okay. next meeting. The okay. other one, I, we put out a little more, Jane, because they weren't, they were not All ready. Right. I, yes, I understand that. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion then to continue it to, to 2 9 21. I'll make a motion to continue planning board case. Uh, planning board case 21-01 to the meeting of February 9th, 2021. Okay, okay we've got a second. All in favor, all in aye. Ivory, yes. Uh, yes. Tilton, yes. Dambitsky, yes. Okay. So thank you, Chris. And we'll see you on the night. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Have a good night. Okay. All right. And I ne next, uh, let's look at our amendments. Okay. We have zoning board amendment number one. Um, would someone like to read that? It's a very short one. Any volunteers? Fred, how would you like to read that? The First Amendment? Yes. Uh, uh, amendment number one, as proposed by the Tilton Planning Board by amending the Tilton Zoning Ordinance, Article 7, Appendix C, Table of Dimensions, Values, Note 2, by eliminating um, the following accessory building may not occupy more than 10% of the area required for the side or rear setback and are not permitted in front setbacks and replaced with on any lot and accessory building greater than 200 square feet may be erected and maintained only with building setbacks in accordance with the requirements of this item An accessory use structure less than 200 square feet and no higher than 17 feet may not be constructed within 10 feet of the property line, nor between a line drawn parallel to the street and passing through the closest front edge of the primary building. All right, are there any comments from the planning board on it? I think we all we did was eliminate the T and then made the replacement. Does anyone in the audience have anything to say? Anyone in the public? No comment. Okay. Then I guess we shall go to amendment number two. If no one in the audience and no one on the planning board has any comments or suggestions. Okay. Um, Eric, would you like to read amendment number two? Sure. Tell the town adopt. Amendment number two, as proposed by the Tilton Planning Board, by amending the, the Tilton Zoning Ordinance, Article 10, Section 8, Accessory Dwelling Unit, as follows. The accessory dwelling unit shall comprise no more than 35% or 750 square feet, whichever is greater of the living space, the area of a house that is above grade, heated and cooled, and that is connected to the main body of the house by other finished areas such as hallways or stairways, excluding garages, garage apartments, porches that are not enclosed or suitable for year round living in patios of the entire primary structure, not including the ADU, accessory dwelling unit. Okay. Are there any concerns or comments from the planning board? Any member of the audience want to speak to this? He doesn't like it. It's a female. I figured a female would bark about it. <laughs> All 
I couldn't I couldn't mute quickly enough. They're quick little dogs. Okay, um the next is solar energy systems ordinance. <laughs> That was not one of my dogs, by the way. Mine, mine's hiding under the desk. Anyway, sorry about that again. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at the changes that were made? There weren't many. And I know last time there was some concerns about the tables. Did Was everybody able to print those out? And take a look at them. Print it out right now. Okay. Judy, were you able to print those out? I know you had difficulty. I'm all set. Okay. Do you have any comments or questions? Anyone? Everybody was ever does anyone in the audience have any comments? Hearing none, I guess we can go on. Wait, is there is there a page that's intentionally left blank in that file? Is there a page left blank? No. I didn't I didn't have a blank page. What Oh, I'm out of paper. That's my problem. The last page was the insert. Just before certified wetland scientist. Yeah, I ran out of paper. Okay. All right. Are there any other comments? And there's no one. There's no one from the public that has any comment. Okay, our next order of business then is to review the minutes of January 7th. Has everybody had a chance to review those? I'll abstain from those because I was not here. Anybody make any changes or additions or corrections? I didn't find any. I don't know whether anybody, Eric, you weren't here. You. All right. Well, I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Then I'll second. All in favor? All in yes? Then I yes. Tilton, yes. Dambitsky, yes. Okay. All right. Does the public have any comments to make whatsoever? Well, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Does anybody have any information or anything else to bring before the board tonight? Um, if I could take just a minute, I know this meeting hasn't been too long, so I was kind of going to wait and see how it went. I did have, if I could just take a minute to inquire the board's thoughts on a project that was brought to my attention today. Um, the uh, the developer, potential developer, asked me to um, explain a little bit about it to the board and see if they had any input for them. So, uh, again, the Anchorage, which I think you probably are all familiar with, um, I'm getting a number of different inquiries uh, for developing that piece of property. And uh, the few that have wanted to develop it, including this gentleman, are looking at uh, residential purposes. I guess there's all, again, you're probably more familiar with this property than I am, but there's a number of seasonal cottages down there. And uh, most of the developers, are, including the one now, is looking to probably get rid of those seasonal cottages and put up, uh, they would like, everyone seems to want to put up some kind of condominiums 
there to maximize the land because uh, it seems it's a nice piece of property. It's on the water. Um, there are some wetlands. The zoning there is commercial, is resort commercial, which only allows one home per acre, um, which there's 23 acres. Uh, condo and apartments are not allowed in that district, although you have the development just down the road a little bit, which is the Kerrigan Court, I believe it is, that is putting up 86 uh, condos in the resort commercial. They did get approval from zoning and planning back a few years ago, I guess, again, long before, maybe, I don't know if all of your time, but definitely my time. And uh, so the other proposal they asked is, would they be allowed, would the planning board entertain them turning those seasonal cottages as they exist into year-round cottages? So, you know, then they, because all those, uh, situations right now are not allowed in your ordinance. You know, they then looked at, well, you know, you allow storage facilities, self storage facilities in that district, you know, so possibly, you know, uh, they talked about, you know, putting something like that there. And I thought that seems very unfortunate to take a beautiful piece of property on the lake like that and put a self storage facility there. So anyway, they asked if I would speak to the board, see if you have any ideas or direction you think they might be able to go with that. Um, you have more experience with that property. I don't know what the abutters feel about um, that land. Uh, it's been there a long time and I know they're looking to move it. So somebody's gonna buy it and somebody's gonna do something. Um, so any input you might have, I'd appreciate, or you can email me later if you have some thoughts that I can pass along to them. I mean, short of going to the zoning board, to allow them to do condominiums, but they would have to have a hardship and I don't know that they really could claim a hardship. Um, so anyway, I kind of open it up for your expertise and maybe experience in town with that property of some direction I could kind of bring them that would be more favorable for the town than something like a storage facility or some other uh, project that might not really be as appealing to the town. I, I did have a question if, if, if that's okay. It's in relating to in related to this because I, I know that in New Hampshire we have a severe shortage of apartments uh, right now, and that the vacancy rate is less than one percent. How do we adapt our town plan to allow for this to, to come in? Because people need houses. There's such a shortage right now. Well, I mean, one way would be to change our ordinances, which is too late now. But maybe next year we can look yeah. at expanding that ordinance to allow condominiums in the resort commercial. I mean, I don't know what the thought was for not allowing condos, just single family homes down there, but um, I mean, you allow motels, they could put a motel, another motel there. Um, so, I mean, I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking for some input if anyone has any uh, historical knowledge or, or ideas that I could um, help well, them there, there are condos very close there. There's Phillips House, there are some condos there. Um, I think, I thought there were some condos across the road are very near there that were- there are. Uh, so, you know, maybe next year we do really want to look at that. Well, I know there's 86 at Car Cardigan Court, so that's, yeah, that's quite correct. a few. But those Cardigan Courts were put in because prior to the zoning changing to disallow condominiums, there was a site plan approved for 90 condominiums that never got developed. So then I believe uh, uh, Mr. Morrow, I probably was, he's the one developing it, came in and said he would like to do 86 condos and that seemed less intense. So the zoning board allowed it, even though they had already passed an ordinance that said you can't have condos. So that's how he got those 86 in was because it was a pre-approved plan for 90 and uh, he reduced it to 86. So again, that was back in 2005, I believe. So anyway, just, uh, I, I told, the, I told the, the gentleman who's got an option to purchase this that I would talk to you for any input. And again, if you have anything now, or you can email me if you have some ideas on how we could um, get that site developed um, favorably for the town, I'd appreciate it. Okay, we'll think about it then. Judy, do you have any history on that? I have a question on Cardigan Court. If that was approved back in 2006 and they've never broken ground, is uh -huh. their site plan still valid? 
They're they're already built. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're they're built. They're still building. They've been building. It's R.J. Morrow, and he's still building. Yeah, we're 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 doing building permits right right now. They've been I don't know how long they've been building there. Quite a while. Janice um, does the building permits. She might know how old some of those permits are, but they, we're getting them every day. So yeah, it's it's a viable project, Judy. Eric. Eric. Um. Just yeah. Am I? Am I? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. The um. Yeah. Just for Frederick's knowledge, in the past, um, some of the projects that have the ideas for that piece of land that have been floated by us conceptually are are not affordable. Not what would most consider affordable housing. These are you know six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollar properties. And they never went through with anything on so that either. It's not going to be that, but I think that. No, but just you know, when he's talking, you know, housing, it's going to be different. But I think this is a, a unique opportunity that the town, um, and I don't know. I see G Forrester's on the line, but I don't. This falls under economic development, where, um, you know, this is. This is a chance to really make have a say in what's going to develop on our 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 um I don't know what the right word is a uh, prime on lake. yeah on the lake yep you know, uh, this is a key piece yeah. of property but whoever stays here is going to be here for the rest of our lifetime so you know I think you know seeing a, a, a nothing against a self storage facility but the, you know those have a place and I don't think it's on our lake um, so okay. I don't we can work with these guys, whoever is going to develop it, work with them to make it the most attractive place that we can. And I, think and I don't know what that is, but I don't see it. I think they've tried to bring in other things and we and they've either been turned down by us or people have not been too happy with what they suggested. And um, again, like Eric, you said, that one firm that came in to see us was going to build those very, very expensive homes there. And apparently that didn't fly. They must have, you know, checked on the opportunities that might exist in this, this area for price for houses at that price level. And I think they're very few. So I, I do think it's something I am like Leanne. I would hate to see storage units go up on that beautiful piece of property. Uh, it would, it, I think it would detract from the community. And we, I think we need to look into how we can get something that would add to the community and to the town of Tilton. Well, I'll continue to, you know, I'll continue to uh, communicate with him and I'll bring back any ideas he might have and see if we can, uh, if we can come up with something. And like I said, anything you have, I'd appreciate. Thanks. Where is, where is the property located? What's that, Fred? Uh, where is the property located at? Uh, it's like 725 Laconia Road, I think, is the address off the okay. top of my head. Uh, it's, yeah, it's down. It's a anchor in. It is an absolutely one of the prettiest pieces of property on the lake. Okay. Beautiful. I'll just, just see what I can come up with. If, if you Google it, you can you can see that um, it's a pretty big piece. It's 23, almost 24 acres, and it's got 2,300 feet of waterfront. Which is a significant amount of waterfront. At one time, they offered it to the town of Tilton to buy as a, a beach for the town of Tilton, but I believe the price was prohibited. Oh, okay. But it's like I said, it's it's just a lovely, lovely piece of property. So let's put our heads together and see if we can come up with something. And Leanne, you continue to work with him to see, because I I would really hate to see it turn into storage unit. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else to bring before the board? John, you're being awful quiet tonight. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn then. Frederick, can I make the motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll second that. All in favor? All in yes? 
Then I yes. Barbara, yes. Tilton, yes. Dembitsky, yes. Thank you all very much. Have a good night, guys. <laughs>